Hello there, welcome to week two of term three. Yes, I've got a little bit of a funny throat this week. Don't know why, I think I've got a bit of a cold. Don't worry, it's not COVID, I've tested. Now, this week we've got a story about a bird and a fly. We've got a crazy zoo. We play When Am I? There's a prize up for grabs for that one. We've got a cartoon from Norbert and Milo. A story about punctuation and brunch with an alien. We've got $100 worth of art gear from Gordon Harris to be won and heaps more. But let's start off with a little bit of an animation about a bird and a fly. There once was a fly and a bee. The bee could fly but the fly couldn't be. Oh, the fly would love to be an astronaut and fly into outer space but the fly couldn't be. But the bee could fly as the bee, well he knew his place. There once was a fly and a bee. The bee could fly, but the fly couldn't be. Oh, the fly could drive a Formula One and win every single race. But the fly couldn't be. But the bee could fly as the bee. Well, he knew his place. There once was a fly and a bee. The bee could fly, but the fly couldn't be. Oh, the fly could be a secret agent. And after Batty said chase, but the fly couldn't be. But the bee could fly, as the bee, well, he knew his place. There once was a fly and a bee. The bee could fly, but the fly couldn't be. Oh, the fly could be a marathon runner. Oh, yes, he would set the pace. But the fly couldn't be. But the bee could fly, as the bee, well, he knew his place. There once was a fly and a bee. The bee could fly, but the fly couldn't be. But one day in spring, fly heard a bird sing. Of course a fly can be. A fly can be the best of flies and fly quite high indeed. Yes, a fly can be like a bee can fly. Just like you or I. Yes, a fly can be like a bee can fly. All a fly needs to do is try. Crikey, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? Now, uh, if you could invent your own zoo, what kind of animals would you have in that zoo? The zoo at Thornbury was unlike most others. It was run by a family, a sister and two brothers. Instead of just lions and zebras and a giraffe, its collection of animals was, well, rather bizarre. A four-humped camel lived at the zoo. He snorted and groaned and made heaps of blue poo. Next to him lived Carla the Llama. She liked reading war stories and wore head-to-toe armour. In the reptile house slid a snake called Sid, all slippery and soft. And can you guess what he did? Sid's secret love was boogieing to songs. He danced, wished and swayed all night long. Zippo the Hippo was also quite odd. He wore a pink apron around his plump bod. Zippo had a small oven he used to bake his favourite recipes like sludge muffins and mud cake. Sally the Giraffe was a vain young thing. Around her amazingly tall neck she wore 100 gold rings. Sparkly diamonds, red rubies, emeralds and pearls. She was the flashiest giraffe in the entire world. In a grassy field near the zoo shop was a huge rabbit that did more than just hop. Bugsy did star jumps, somersaults, flips and twists. He could cartwheel for hours with a flick of his wrist. Most zoos have a bear. Nothing unusual there, but the one at Thornbury wore makeup and permed her hair. She had long curly lashes and lips painted bright red. She wore a snazzy green jumpsuit, even in bed. Perhaps the strangest animal at Thornbury Zoo was a tall, skinny, bright thing called a Watchamadoo. With pink fluffy feathers, three eyes and webbed feet, the Watchamadoo was certainly unique. I'd love to see some pictures of the animals in your crazy zoo. Draw a picture, 
get your teacher to take a photo of that picture. Head along to our website, that's the story.co.nz, click on contact us and email your artwork from there. I'll put it up on one of our future shows and you're into winning a $100 art pack from Gordon Harris. Now, let's play a game. When am I? I'm about to give you some clues. From those clues, I want you to try and guess what year it is I'm talking about. Here come those clues. When in history am I? On April 15 of this year, Samuel Johnson's A Dictionary of the English Language is published in London. On November the 1st of this year, Lisbon earthquake kills more than 50,000 people in Portugal. And Mary Antoinette was born in this year. When in history am I? If you reckon you know when it was that I was talking about, head along to our website, that's the story.co.nz. Click on contact us, send your answer in from there. First correct answer is into winning some books from Spectrum Education now. Let's have a cartoon from our crazy friends called Norbit. And Milo. Norbert Milo's knock knock. Norbert, hello Milo. I've got another knock knock joke for you. Let's hear it then. Knock knock, Norbert, who's there? Theodore. Theodore who? Theodore wasn't open, so I knocked. Oh. Ah. They are indeed a pair of very weird characters indeed. If you would like to draw a picture of Norbert and Milo and send it in to me, I'd love to see your pictures. Draw the picture, have your teacher take a photo of your picture, go to our website, that's the story.co.nz, click on contact us, you can send me your picture from there. I'll pop it up on one of our shows in the future. Now, punctuation. Isn't life marvellous with punctuation? Full stop always had the last word. It kind of made Comma just a little bit jealous. But Comma got over it. Someone had to have the last word. The only time Full Stop didn't get the last word was when exclamation mark butted in. Hello, yes, it's me. It's me, everybody. Hello. One other punctuation mark sometimes got the last word in too. Do you know which other punctuation mark got the last word in? That's right, the question mark. Exclamation mark would always talk just a little too loud. And as for speech marks, nobody could say a word without them being involved. Why do you always have to be involved? Complained question mark. I think you should just go away. Complained exclamation mark. And the speech marks, surprisingly enough, said absolutely nothing. This annoyed exclamation mark, drove question mark insane, and full stop didn't like it at all. Semicolon and colon, ellipsis, yes, the good old dot dot dots even got involved. Comma, hyphen, dash, parenthesis, even brackets joined in. Apostrophe, they all decided to go on strike until speech marks would jolly well stop butting in on their conversations. Well, things got carried away and nothing was really that easy to understand and no one stopped talking and there was no break in the conversation so everyone talked over each other and no one knew where one person stopped and another person began. It was a complete catastrophe until exclamation mark put a stop to it all. Be quiet! We're sorry, speech marks. Please join us again. We've decided we can't live without you. Speech marks said absolutely nothing, but bowed their curly bits and nodded in agreement, and all was well in the land of punctuation. You see, it's all about teamwork. While one person can be good at one thing, another can be good at something completely different. And while you may not understand what it is they do, it may have quite the effect on the way you do things. Each to their own, decided parenthesis. Absolutely! Yelled exclamation mark. What other way can there be? Added question mark. And that's the end of that. Announced full stop. And that was indeed the end of that. Now, if you would like me to do a shout out to your classroom, all you have to do is pop along to our website, that's the story.co.nz. Click on contact us and give me your details from there, and I'll do a shout out to you and your classroom in one of our upcoming shows. Now, let's have a bit of brunch with an alien. Jeremy's mum and dad liked to go out to brunch. They would bundle themselves off in their Sunday best to sit on the pavements to see who was out and about, and to be seen out and about themselves. Sometimes Jeremy went with them, and sometimes he'd get bought a fluffy, a frothy white milky mixture with lots of marshmallows and chocolate stuff sprinkled on the top. But most of the time Jeremy stayed home with his big brother Nick. Sitting in cafes was boring. 
Unless, of course, you had a special cafe jam-packed full of your secret alien friends. It was Sunday, and Jeremy's parents had gone out to brunch, leaving Jeremy and Nick to their own devices. Jeremy decided that he'd have his own special brunch and that he'd invite two of his very best secret alien friends. Jeremy prepared some things from the kitchen. Cups and saucers, toast and Vegemite, some buttered pikelets smothered in jam, and the blue milk from the fridge. Oh, and some Milo too, because milk just by itself wasn't that good, and Jeremy knew that his secret alien friends had very discerning palates. Jeremy took his breakfast things into his bedroom and shut the door firmly behind himself. Nick was listening to music in his own bedroom and would probably stay there all day. Jeremy laid out the breakfast items on his homework desk and arranged his chairs and beanbag around the edges. He was ready, ready for the aliens to arrive. First to arrive was Bladrush from the planet Igzar. Bladrush was the tallest alien that Jeremy had ever seen and he had to bend himself into eight pieces just to get through Jeremy's bedroom window. Bladrush had parked his spaceship in Jeremy's back garden and wasn't a big fan of doors. Bladrush was a stunning shade of pink and sported three giant heads bobbing around on thin elasticated necks like a handful of party balloons. Bladrush had bought his own contributions to Jeremy's alien brunch party and put a plate down on the desk, now functioning as the breakfast table. The plate shimmered and wobbled. It looked a bit like a plate of jelly, but it was moving and full of little creature-like things crawling on top of each other and wriggling around. Jeremy didn't really like the look of it at all. But Bladrush seemed very chuffed with himself for having brought it along. There was a faint tap at Jeremy's bedroom door. Dartmink had arrived. Dartmink was probably Jeremy's favourite secret alien of all time. Dartmink was very hard to see. You had to turn your head sideways and squint out of the corner of your left eye and then, and only then, you could just make out the virtually invisible form of Dartmink. Dartmink had a great sense of humour, however, and was always telling Jeremy the most fantastic stories about his outer space travels and intergalactic battles. Dartmink had brought along some werbat juice, all the way from the planet Zarbink. It was yellow and gooey and smelt a little bit like the seaside. Odd, thought Jeremy. Very odd indeed. The three friends sat around the breakfast table, formerly Jeremy's homework desk, and Jeremy began to distribute the food. Bladrush enjoyed the toast and Vegemite very much, and Dartmink was a great fan of the Milo. In fact, he liked it so much that he began to eat the Milo straight from the packet without any milk at all. Jeremy ate some too. Then Bladrush had a couple of spoonfuls and... Before you knew it, the Milo was all gone. Whoops, thought Jeremy. Mum won't like that at all. Have some Udamana, said Bladrush, and pushed the plate of wibbly-wobbly crawling stuff towards Jeremy. Um, I'm... I'm not sure, said Jeremy, curling up his nose. It looks a bit... weird. No weirder than your Milo, replied Bladrush. And, piped up Dartmink, how do you know you don't like it if you've never had it before? Jeremy agreed that Dartmink had a point, and so he very, very slowly spooned some of the crawling goo into his mouth. It tasted like strawberries and cream on a hot summer day. It was delicious. The three friends continued to eat as they sat around the table, discussing interplanetary events and the news of the universe. Jeremy was very happy with how the morning had gone, and before he knew it, his parents were back from their own brunch. Jeremy! 
Jeremy? called Jeremy's mum from the kitchen. What happened to the Milo and the packet of pikelets I was saving for afternoon tea? I don't know, Jeremy called out. Maybe some aliens ate them. And he smiled and giggled to himself. That's my lot for another week. Thanks ever so much for joining me. I hope my cold is gone by next week and my voice is back to normal. Hey, have a really cool week. If you want to get in contact with us, head for our website, thatsthestory.co.nz and click on contact us. Have a great week. Ka ki I want to hear the one about the big old plum tree. I want to hear the one about the giggly balloon. I want to hear the one about the juggling. Oh, baby, that's the story that I wanna hear.